Hi, my name is Joe Baker. And I'm Jeff Baker. And we're going to be working on the orange belt self-defense techniques. Now, unlike the yellow belt list, where we only had 10 techniques, we now have 24 techniques per belt to work with here. Uh, the orange belt techniques are not a whole heck of a lot longer than the yellow belt, but they're a little bit more involved because the yellow belt list had us focusing primarily on one side of our body, our right side of the body, if we were working the A side of the technique. Uh, whereas the orange belt list is going to get us moving both sides of our body, alternating between our arms so that we can increase the fluidity and speed of our techniques. The first technique on the orange belt list is called clutching feathers. Feathers is a reference to our hair. This is not an attack that I would personally have to worry about very often, but in the case of somebody grabbing a hold of your hair, this technique teaches some really good principles that I think we should understand. In this case, our attacker is grabbing the top of our head. He's grabbing a fistful of our hair right away. And just like any other grab in Kenpo, we're going to re regain control by grabbing the hand or hands that are grabbing us. So in this case, our left hand is going to come up and grab a hold of his fist and hold it really closely against our skull. We're doing this for a couple of reasons. One, we don't want him ripping a fistful of hair out of our scalp. So by hanging on and pushing that against our skull, we can prevent him from being able to do that. But now when I step away from him with my left leg into a right neutral bow, I'm simultaneously putting him in a really modest wrist lock for the purpose of checking his wit. I want to make sure that that right hand isn't going to become a problem because more than likely his plan is this. Grab a hold of the top of my head and bash me in the face with a punch. So yes, this hurts, but again, just like any other grab, we are more concerned with what's going on with the other side of his body. So when he comes in, he's going to grab, we grab him back. We're going to step away from him and to nullify that punch, we're going to throw what's called a middle knuckle strike, or what used to be called an eagle's beak strike, into the top portion of his rib cage, just below his armpit. Nice and tender right there. You're not going to have to worry about that spare tire getting in the way. We're going to go where it really hurts up here into the top of his rib cage. Now immediately, we're going to assume, by the way, that he releases his grab. We're going to turn this into an outward block. We're going to kind of rotate our forearm right here and use frictional pull to draw his head into the next strike, which is a left palm strike to his jaw. He grabs with his left hand, we grab, we step back, eagle's beak chalked to the uh, top of the ribs. Outward block, go into a right forward bow as you execute a palm strike to the mandible, the jawbone. Now we're in a right forward bow. My right hand, as you can see, is kind of cocked. We're setting up to do a slicing hammer fist strike through the other side of his jaw. And we're going to apply torque when we go from a left, excuse me, a right forward bow to a right neutral bow, cutting through the face with a right hammer fist strike.